So I will grab the first box out. The same cereal, the very same, was released in a very limited, <laughs> limited time box. Boom. Whoa. Welcome home, Rep Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob, the world's biggest Nickelodeon collection. But not just that, the creator and CEO of this channel, as an Olympic athlete, was on a cover of a box of Wheaties. But I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day, and if you guys aren't, you know the drill. SpongeBob cereal camera flip. <laughs> the day is about to get a whole lot brighter, right back, because we are adding something legendary, legend. Dairy to the collection today. Something I am extremely, extremely, convulsingly excited for. And that is SpongeBob cereal. You guys may know we have in the collection currently the original SpongeBob cereal, the movie SpongeBob cereal, and several less important ones as well. But today we are adding the absolute rarest SpongeBob cereals that they ever released. We are gonna be getting them in this box right here. But not not just that, this is probably gonna be one of the most legendary vintage SpongeBob videos on this channel because everything else in here is green label. I bought the cereals from a particular seller. I reached out to them and asked them if they had any other stuff that they might wanna throw in the box and that I had to pay for, of course. But the stuff that I have here is so rare, so ridiculously awesome, I could not pass it up and we will be adding it over here to this very vacant looking green label <laughs> shelf. Look at a little orange. Right now. Yeah, made some space for it, and we're gonna have to make some space over here too. So we are gonna start with the cereals, but stay tuned because after the cereals, we are gonna be opening up absolute grails. So without any further ado, let's get into this box and let's check out these cereals. So we have the original SpongeBob cereal right here, we brought it down for reference, and also the SpongeBob movie cereal. And I'm not gonna lie, I already put these items in a protector before loading them in the box with the rest of the items because I didn't want to risk any damage to these. I have been looking for these boxes for over five years collecting SpongeBob products. And we got all three of them in one fail swoop. It's actually one fell swoop. One fail swoop? One fell swoop. Fell? Yep. One, one fell swoop. One rose swoop. <laughs> okay. So I will grab the first box out. The same cereal, the very same was released in a very limited, limited time. Cause that's the same thing, you know? Well, I'm just excited, okay? <laughs> limited it's time. Limited and limited. <laughs> limited time box. Boom. Whoa. <laughs> yes. What the heck? Yes, we have the SpongeBob Kellogg's Absorbing Favorites based on episode 14B, Karate Choppers. And what? you will notice the cereal is the same cereal, you know, we have over here in the Kellogg's box. Wow. But you've learned a lot about SpongeBob here in this channel. Have you ever seen this box before? No, I thought it was just like these were the only ones for the original. Yes, that's most people, they did. They had these ones growing up. One of the two. I never had these growing up. But when I found out they existed, it was merely Google stock image photos. Random ones that were on Craigslist years, decades ago. This one right here, as you can tell, mint. Dude. Oh my gosh, the green label SpongeBob. The green label <laughs> logo on there. And look in the wow. back. You have all these obscure SpongeBob images where you're trying to figure out what's wrong with them. You know, obviously we have a blue Gary up here. Shiny Gary's a little off. You have to express yourself where you can put the different SpongeBob images on there. We're gonna take a look at the box separately. But let's get them all out first. So this is for a series that was released for this DVD right here. Absorbing favorites. This disc is a compilation of some of the fans most desired and favorite episodes. So for this disc, when it was released, they launched a couple products. Another one, which we have in here, that were a part of the absorbing favorites lines. Some of them you'll notice back here, like the episode boxes that we have as well. But those are not a part of the absorbent line. These are the episodic toys by Mattel. So you have all these ones down here. These are some of the hardest toys in general to collect when it comes to SpongeBob merchandise. It's next to impossible to find some of these back here. But they had another line with the same type of episodic theming as you see here with the same buoy with the episodes that was limited to the absorbing favorites. And let me just say that at that point, it had only been out for five years 
and episodes were nostalgic enough to put them on a compilation disc of absorbing favorites. So you will see the iconic Karate Chopper right there and also right here with the blue box. The only product that I would say is like a legitimate blue label. So this is to accompany them. This came out first, this came out next, and this would have came out the latest. And of course in the movie they added in Plankton as well, but then removed him for this one to give the original same style. But that's not the only box they released. The it's next episode Episode? Try to guess. Oh man, I'm absorbing favorites. Am I the biggest loser on the beach? No, I'm the biggest loser on the beach. Boom! Oh. We have ripped pants right here. What the heck? So these were all on the shelf at the same time, but there was three different box variations that you could collect. I wish I saw these on the shelf, what the heck? <laughs> I, exactly, I, I, we would have been a little older by then, so maybe we wouldn't have even gone after these. This was like the end, the end of the peak era, you know? This is as good as it gets when it comes to rarity and it comes to SpongeBob food products. This is unbelievable. So we have the ripped pants. Like I said, we're gonna take a look at all the boxes here in a second. We have a next box, and that is episode 39A, Whoa. Jellyfish Hunter. Goodness. So, all three of these boxes are now archived in protectors here in the collection. Museum quality on them. I mean, the seals are freaking spotless. I had to put them in the protector instantly to preserve this. I mean, I could get another one of these boxes if I had to. I could get another one of these boxes if I had to. I mean, in fact, I have a couple of these ones. I don't necessarily know I'll ever be able to get another one of these boxes. And if I do, doubtably I'll be able to get all three of them. I would have to piece it over for a decade to try to get all three of them again. This this was a once in a lifetime pickup. I am just extremely proud of them and so happy just to be able to, as a fan of the show, as a collector, to be able to archive these and get them on the internet. So let's take a look at the side of the box here. Again, we have so much. This video is just, we're just scratching the surface of the beauty, the wonder that this video is going to be for SpongeBob vintage merchandise. So let's take a look at the box here. We got three of them, so we can take a look at it. You can take a look at the side there. We have the nutritional facts, of course, and you'll see the box release was 2000. 2006. So they aired this box from 2006 to 2000, the end of 2007. Very short period. Taking a look on the other side here, these ones actually do change depending on the box. So if you put on the side of the boxes, all three of them actually make Conch Street, if you can tell from the front there. Dude, that is so cool. Yeah, so on the right one, let's take a look at this one. For ripped pants, it says, who invited SpongeBob and Sandy to lift weights? Larry. You wanna go lift some weights? It's just like, I said, all the branding of this, it's very like Pokemon-esque, like where it's like you teach kids about the show and it creates so much more of a love for the show and the property. And this one is jellyfishing, the sponge who could fly, which is interesting that they use a sponge who could fly for the actual information piece here on the side when the box is based on a jellyfish hunter. I didn't actually notice that detail until actually filming this currently. So that's really weird that they picked a sponge who could fly for the factoids on the side here. Where was the square pants flyer Mark III made from? Ooh, that's even hard for me. There was the attempt at a plane. There was the kite. There was the spandex rubber suit. And then he had like, yeah, like metal wings for a little bit. And then they had his pants. I don't know which one would be. I'm going to go with his pants or the rubber suit. I was thinking the rubber suit as well because like that was like the third iteration. Yeah, okay, so we'll see if we're right. We're gonna put a video clip on screen for you guys with the correct answer. Behold. Oh boy, a birthday party. No, Patrick. This is the Square Pants Flyer Mark III. And then for the last one here, we have the Karate Choppers itself. Let's take a look at it. And the questions are, what color is SpongeBob's karate safety gear? Red. Yeah, that one's pretty easy comparatively to the last box. But an amazing box here. And I love the consistency in the packaging here. Like they're all exactly the same size too. All of the Kellogg's boxes are made the same size, same top bill. They fit perfectly together. So. We have just got the first crunchy bite out of this cereal bowl that's gonna be this video. I'm gonna put these up on the shelf now. I literally cannot wait. Typically at the end of the video, we'd add everything to the collection. I can't wait. Let's go add them onto the shelf. Okay, this video is gonna keep getting better and better, but boom, they are on the shelf. I couldn't wait another moment. Another iota of a second. They look beautiful, dude. Looks so much cleaner. Yeah, instead of having like kind of two random sized boxes. Now it's just purity. <laughs> All Kellogg. That is incredible. We have every iteration of the original Kellogg cereal on screen for you guys right now. All in one place. 
sponge history. You're telling me the rest of the box is just as crazy as that? It, all together, yeah. Okay, so the next item we got out of here I want to use throughout this video. <laughs> wow, that's a word. This is the Nick Dictionary, a new addition to the Nickelodeon <laughs> library here. The Nick Dictionary. You got freaking Angelica on here with an apple. You've got Cosmo, you've got SpongeBob with the ABC. You've got Danny for Hero. You've got Jimmy for Backpack. And what did you just say a minute ago? Wow. Wow. So let's see what the word wow is in the Nickelodeon Dictionary. There it is, there it is. Wow. Interjection, a word you say to show you are amazed or excited about something. Wow, the crimson chin has the biggest chin ever. <laughs> <laughs> so as we go through this box, I'm sure we will say other words that'll be of, uh, of interest. And we will look in the, in the Nickelodeon Dictionary in order to understand them better and also see what example. I mean, they have Cat Dog here at the start here reading a book. Really cool is in general. You have all the different <laughs> images, but characters actually help you throughout the entire book on what certain oh, words whoa, you- Whoa, 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 whoa. He's got Gary on his head doing the thing. Oh my goodness, that's a new one. Gary is, <laughs> this is happy. He does not look happy. Oh, he's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I really describe Squidward as a whole as sad. sad. That's my one of my new favorite additions to the Nickelodeon library, the Nick Dictionary. So Banger City keeps going. You may notice a little blank space over there in the shelf, right? Yeah. Right? Been, yeah, it's been bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have probably the most like summarizing green label product of season one. We have the official by Mattel SpongeBob bikini. Bottom play set. Dude! Whoa! <laughs> that is unbelievable! This is the full play set of Con Street here with a working SpongeBob boat mobile. That is so sick. What the heck? <laughs> he doesn't have a license, so you can only use it to crash this side of the rock and then work your way backing up, backing up into the back here. But I will tell you, dude, I have looked forever for this, but not just this. If you will notice, there's several jellyfish throughout the design here and often these jellyfish are kind of all over the place this is the first time I've ever seen where the jellyfish are all pretty much in their original places including the one inside of the net here it is next to never that you see the jellyfish like you know in their natural spots but look you have Patrick which looks so season one Squidward looks like sponge boy season one yeah. <laughs> like before they were even out then you actually have the boat mobile and I thought this was the perfect item to kind of sit on the top of of the actual green label shelf. Consider it is Con Street, and you've got Squidward's house, you've got SpongeBob's house, you have Patrick's house, and the box, I mean, it's not perfect, you know? Like, there is like a little ding right here, but overall, the condition on it is pretty incredible. You can even put Patrick in the boat mobile, which I don't even know. Like, we see in that episode where he's using the antenna to talk to SpongeBob that he clearly knows how to drive, but you don't really see him driving that often. Patrick, what do you think you're doing? I don't know! I don't have a license anymore! Very, very cool piece. And it actually labels this little land in front of it. This is so early on, dude. Like, so here it says Jellyfish Field. Perfect, right? They were trying to stretch as much as they could. They actually labeled his street as Muscle Beach. Huh. Which we can show a clip of Muscle Beach on screen right now, which is actually where like Don the Well, Larry, all of them are lifting the weights, you know, the volleyball court. Yeah. That's Muscle Beach. This is not Muscle Beach, but it's so early on into the show that they were just going with some of the titles they had heard and reference points that they had to actually label everything up. And this was released in 2002, and of course by Mattel. So what are, let's rank our products for today. Of everything in here is green or green and white label. So our standards have to be like here. How many SpongeBob boats are we giving out of 10? I think with all of that it encompasses and how OG it is, I think you gotta give it at least 10 boats. I think 10 boats too, because I feel like if you're not you know, going crazy like I am with the whole collection, if you were to have one product from the green label era, I think this is the most all-encompassing product you could have. Because what is it missing really, you know? Exactly, I mean, you can get the Build-A-Bob, which is nice, you know, Build-A-Bob is great. You can get the cereal, which represents the cereal. Maybe the only debatable one is the bendable figures. Yeah, with the characters. But with that one, you only get the characters. You get SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, their houses, jellyfish, a boat. You get 
everything. I mean, minus the Krusty Krab and the Chum Bucket. I mean, as far as like season one goes, this is probably the most all-encompassing product. So I gotta give that one a 10 out of 10. So next up, you are not going to believe this. So you know, some of my favorite things to collect here are some of the food products. You know, what if I told you there was SpongeBob bath goods, like soaps, toothbrushes. You've seen the toothpaste before. We don't have a single soap in here. But don't you have shampoo? I have shampoo, but it's modern. Oh, okay. This is the original green label bikini Whoa. bottom bubble bath. <laughs> Dude, that is so nostalgic. <laughs> I feel like I've seen these before at Walmart or something. Exactly. It's literally like brand spanking new. But literally, I don't know where they were storing these at man this is like you know a lot of times you you're here for it we get a lot of these products they're dusty have insect legs in it yeah <laughs> uh, you name it you know when people have stuff in storage for a long period of time this stuff it's like you literally like I said you went to the store and picked it up you have the original Nickelodeon logo down there and look at how vibrant the colors are there is not a nuance of color that has been lost or faded on it and this is the bubble bath right here this is grapefruit gum flavor. Different, flavored? Or, yeah, well, uh, scented, fragrance. <laughs> I mean, you could drink it if you want to. And that's sealed, dude. Sealed. Go ahead and I... lift one of those bad boys up. Dang. No evaporation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you poured this, it would work. <laughs> Does soap go bad? I don't think so. So this one's from 2002, and then this was one when they re-released the bubble bath in 2004. They look like they came out the same day. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like They look like they're the same damn day. I thought maybe they were just same day, two variants in the bottle. But this is a slightly later release, and you'll notice the back of them, they did change it slightly. Personally, I like the back on the front one. Yeah, because um, like, oh, here's the back of SpongeBob. Yeah, the 2002 one has a way better backing. You'll see there's a slight little change in the logo itself, and the font is maybe a little different, but overall, they're pretty much the same. I'm not done though, so we're not gonna rate this one quite yet. Not done? Nope, 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 nope. This is the craziest one. So this was the one you got at like friggin' the 99 cent store. Or Walmart, but if you went up to a Target, you would get the clear one with clear the SpongeBob figurine on top. Dang! <laughs> this is Jelly Berry Bubble Bath. Dude, that sounds like it smells so good. <laughs> I know, and look at the color, man! It's like that blue. It looks like Goo Lagoon, like goo. And I've seen that figurine places before and had no clue where it came from. This one was advertised in Nickelodeon Magazine. The original SpongeBob bubble bath here. 2002, right after the show was at its peak in popularity so they could release products like this and people would run to the stores and buy them. And very same as well, this is sealed. But you will notice a little bit of evaporation has happened in this one. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell with old soaps, but I mean, I mean, knows? maybe it could have came with a little less, but the bottle, dude. It's just funny because it's like, oh yeah, that's like definitely a Target thing, but it's like, oh, here's 11 ounces and then 16 at Walmart. Yeah, this is the Walmart one versus the Target one. You know, you're like, okay, well, they're both SpongeBob bubble bath, but clearly that somebody sicker, paid more, yeah. you know? <laughs> this one is unbelievable. If I had to pick one, I'm going with this. But that little duo, that trio, I mean, unreal. It's all a setup in itself. That's a bath, like a bathroom collection in itself, literally. I gotta say, man, in some ways, this is obviously more of a synopsis of the show. But this, for me, is more like iconic and merchandise rarity and just overwhelming on the senses than this is even. I don't know what the point of the ranking in this video, but I'm giving this one a 10 and a 10, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just not gonna be anything but tens, <laughs> you know? Maybe, okay, nine, eight, because it's a little bit newer, ten. Yeah. But the colors on all of them are so gorgeous. It makes me, in some ways, want to just put them in a silicone wrapping and just put them in the vault. But I mean, these have to be displayed. You know, these have to be displayed for all of their glory, for the world to be able to see. Incredible. And all of them say, it's SpongeBob's Tropical Sir right in your tub. A great kid-friendly formula for children ages three and up. Because if your kid's under three, they'll drown in this fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and oh, and this is a bubble blower. It How? just keeps getting better. <laughs> How is it a bubble blower? I guess like you squeeze the water and then it oh, yeah There's a little hole in his teeth that you can actually like shoot out the bubbles with that is interesting I would have never thought that yeah me either so next up here. I talked about the absorbing favorites, right? <laughs> yes so uh, this, is green a good bit. <laughs> yeah, this is the green and white label and under that same line Ooh. 
we have the absorbing favorites here. So this is the SpongeBob deck of cards here. You know, classic green and white label, released by the Bicycle Company, and actually has playing cards based off of different episodes from the absorbing favorites, including him getting some lifeguard ice cream on his nose. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have some SpongeBob modern trading cards in the collection here on screen. And even if you look at some of the other green label products, like the green label SpongeBob cards, these are ones you could have got at like the dollar store, Kmart, as you see for $1.22. These ones right here, the cards are pretty much just characters. They're really cool. You get the King SpongeBob there. These are undoubtedly way more nostalgic considering you get the iconic SpongeBob imageries for so many episodes right here on them. I mean, even the cards are just beautiful in the background, you know? It's not just a plain white. Yeah, for sure. And it says favorite scenes of our favorite SpongeBob episodes appear on a keepsakes tin so that tin in itself will hold them on each deck a seaworther playing card spongebob rip pants episode and jellyfish hunting twice the fun for fans of all ages so this was a whole like product campaign for a dvd i was gonna say you know it was classic when they came back to it yeah like unbelievable and you know the green and white labels we have a little trivia for you it's a hoy i'm saying <laughs> the welcome mat outside spongebob's front door says Yoha. But <laughs> is it is it really that question again? Yeah, it's that one again. It's always that one. <laughs> <laughs> what are we giving this one though for the rating? I gotta give it at least. I'll give him an eight. Eight? Eight boat. Okay, so I'm assuming when we rank these, I'm gonna give it an eight too. But you have to think about this, guys. When we do these rankings, this eight would be a 10 on another day. Or just a different product, yeah. Because we're comparing it to everything else we've pulled out so far. Any other day of the week, if we found some stuff at the thrift, if we found this you know, at the store, wherever it may be, this would be a 10. Yeah, all but day. Okay, so keeping it moving here. So we do have some smaller items in here. You know, not everything can be that big. <laughs> <laughs> smaller items here. We we have yellow label era. This is actually a SpongeBob birthday candle they threw in here. Wow, it's not melted at all? Yeah, it's from 2010. It's not melted, but it does look like it got cracked on the bottom, unfortunately. Oh, I see. So there is a small crack, but I mean, how is it that like a candle can look better than some Funko product? Like that, the that's sad. The detail, <laughs> like, that's incredible detail on a candle, right? Yeah, they'll even like, like you can see every little individual patty. Like I wish that they would have released it as an actual figure. I don't believe they ever did, but Man, I would have flipped out as a kid to have this on my actual cake. But 2010, I, I'm sure that candle probably could still light too. This one, what are we thinking though? I think as it's newer, I'm gonna give it like a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go seven. I'm gonna give it a six because we have so much to go through. Six and a half? Six and a half. Let's go six and a half right in the middle on this guy. Okay, you wanna talk about modern. Look at that label. That's Ooh. like not quite modern. That's technically the green and white label area. You'll see they only used that for a couple green and white label products, but in the same time, Time, they still did use the classic SpongeBob logo, but for some of the products they did use is green and white. So this one is particularly for very special SpongeBob, well, special. <laughs> and that is Pass of the West. One of Ooh. my favorites, man. It makes me think it's gonna be like a little like badge or something, like a little star sheriff. You knew what it was. I actually don't. <laughs> you had to know what it was. There's I no don't. way. All you said was best of the West. <laughs> How do you guess it's a badge, Mitchell? Because if anyone else couldn't draw that conclusion. <laughs> I mean, maybe they can. I don't know how good they are at art. But like, <laughs> art. you guys tell me if Mitchell somehow looked this product up in the past or something. I, I don't even know what it is. Does this say on the front? No, it just says Bob Le Blood. Well, just it may off, be something like that. Best of the West. So based off of SpongeBob, Pest of the West, they released from the brand Avon of makeup fame, right? What does uh, Avon make? Makeup, right? Makeup, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They released a watch, and yes, it Ooh. does have an official Sheriff SpongeBob badge to go with an awesome SpongeBob watch. But honestly, more so than the watch, I wanted that badge. That is so sick. It is way too cool of a badge to not pick up, and the badge actually is a pin. Like, that has got to be one of the most unique, rare, and fun style pins ever. I don't know if I can bring myself to put it on the pin board. I think it might just be something we put in the gold section. Oh, that'd be sick. Like, I think it's too cool to not put in the gold section. And you may even see me wear this guy every <laughs> now and then in a couple videos, you know? I think this is definitely something I could see myself wearing in videos. Cause that's just sick, man. And I mean, the watch is cool too. You got the, uh, you know, kind of like cowboy themed, you know, brown. Cause cowboys love brown. Cause they didn't like their boots. They didn't know how to dye 
things back then, I suppose. They have the stars. The watch in itself is cool. You have SpongeBob there. But let's be real. The pin is really where it's at. Considering it is a limited edition product from Avon, I'm giving it a nine. I was thinking nine as well, yeah. Nine out of 10. I mean, I would give it a 12 for every hour it counts, but I'm gonna go ahead and do nine. All right, next item, are you ready for this? Yeah, but I'm, it's just so exciting to see like all these items being added to this beautiful collection and just to archive it for this community, you know? It's like really sick. Yeah, I, I agree with that, thank you. I mean, I think that us doing it together and, and the keyword community, us doing it as a community is the big <laughs> thing here. Let's look that word up. Every time I use a word that's a little bit, you know, outside of what I normally <laughs> use. anything bigger than four letters. <laughs> Let's look it up. Kagadu. Come on, community's gotta be in here. Here it is, community, community. A town or neighborhood where people live. AJ and Chester live in the same community, which is not even true. They don't even live in the same community. <laughs> AJ lives in like a rich neighborhood where they have like 700 TV channels. And Chester's. Chester lives in like a trailer, like a really rundown trailer. <laughs> so that's not even a true statement. <laughs> but yes, we are a community. We don't live in the same place, but we do virtually live in the same fandom and enjoyment of the same things which makes this comfort cartoons community incredible the rep pack and let's go to the next new item to the collection and on that let's look for the word new and see what we got here new not used or known about before new is the opposite of old <laughs> spongebob can't wait to try out his new surfboard that is not the surfboard you use of the surf off so i think that is new for spongebob but i love it they don't say like oh new is not only only not used, not but known, known about, about before. You know, like classic saying goes, if I ain't seen it, it's new to me. Yeah. It, you know, it's new to you. If you haven't seen it, it's new. Next item, let's grab it out of here. And that is the SpongeBob Ooh. Flash and Roll game. Oh, dang, a game? Yeah, and dude, go ahead and try and touch that. See how your fingers not making oh. contact? You? That's brand new saran wrapping. As in, never been used and also never been known of. We <laughs> have the splash and roll game, but I have no clue what this is. I never played this as a kid. And another product that I would damn near say is part of the blue era. Yeah, because it's like green label logo, but blue coloring. And then the back is just this same image. Just fun. Look at them legs, man. If I could bend like that, that means I don't have bones. Your knees are broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually the SpongeBob in the background there. If you have to be over seven years old to play this, and you can play with up to 24 people. This is two to four. Or two to four people. <laughs> but you have all the different sponge pieces there, and it looks like the game's pretty fun. Not fun enough to open it, but <laughs> fun nonetheless. There's jellyfish figures in there and a bunch of SpongeBob's. Oh my gosh, dude. And look, Ryan, if we can zoom in on that jellyfish, without a doubt. This is made by Mattel, right? Without a doubt, those jellyfish are the same jellyfish for the molding that are the jellyfish inside of this. Look at that jellyfish in the back right there laying down. Yeah. And look at those jellyfish inside of the game. That's if, classic remolding right there. If not, they're like standing up slightly higher. That's it. Yeah, there's a recoloring of the same jellyfish. But it's good that we have this one sealed because if we ever find one of these at the thrift flea market, we can use those figures in the collection. <laughs> Just SpongeBob everywhere. Absolutely. And this was released in 2002. So probably one of the earliest SpongeBob games ever. I'm giving this 10 out of 10 Mattel jellyfish. Okay, so next item out of here, we have is a box here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, so this person, they also actually had a job part-time at Walmart in the vision section. Because yes, Walmart does everything. They're, I mean, they have a vision section, they have an auto repair shop. I mean, they'll damn do your taxes. They'll, they'll, they'll give you the heart surgery if you ask for it. And they do everything. But while they work in the visual aid center, they also got a bunch of these display glasses for SpongeBob. Ooh. So these are all vintage SpongeBob eyewear. Oh, I love those blue ones. I mean, you're the glasses guy here, so I'm interested <laughs> to see which one is your favorite glasses. So we have six pairs here, it looks like, in total, and these all come from the year 2004. So, Mitchell, Mitchell, you're the glasses guy. Go ahead and show me your glasses. These dusty old things. <laughs> so, yours are a little bigger, though, than these. But yeah, I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like size wise, not the thickness. It's probably because those are for kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's that's probably more accurate. Either that or you got a big eyes or these guys have small eyes. <laughs> but I want you to rate these from one to six being the best pair to the worst pair. So let's take a look at this one over here first. On here on the inside, you have a little sponge design here on the side. And then on the end of them, I think it's really cool. You have this little tiny sponge on the, uh, the 
in padding of a glass is. I don't know what you call this. I don't know. It's just the thing that goes around your ears. <laughs> People with glasses don't know what this is. And then the actual little eye nose pads. Like nose guards. Yeah. Nose guards. These are clear. I mean, I always thought these glasses were just like, oh, they put a sticker on them and that was it. But it looks like there actually is a level of designing. Because if you look on the side here, it's actually like a little anchor. Yeah, I mean, those so are pretty sick. Sleek detail. Blue ones, let's check them out. You have the sponge on the inside of the inner padding, ear pad thing, and then you have the Spongebob bubbles in the end thing are here, but because they're the skinny man glasses, they don't have a lot of room for detail here. They're so skinny, this thing don't even focus on them. And that's pretty much it. You get the little Spongebob sticker. removable sticker there, and I mean, other than the bubbles on the edge there, and the little Spongebob pad on the back, you could just say these are not Spongebob glasses. These could be Quicksilver or like Hurley you yeah. know, glasses for all you know. So I don't know where you rank those ones, but for me, I feel like those ones miss a lot, you know? Now let's get to these reds right here. So the reds right here, now these look like a stylish kid. So we have the SpongeBob on there again. You know, nothing to be desired. Nothing, you're not missing out on much here in the front. But on the side here, you get the nice Nickelodeon orange striping with the black wave ocean vibes on the side here. On the interior, you get the nice red. But I gotta say, they didn't do much here on the inside. You got this one little thing here that says SpongeBob. I don't know. For me right now, I'm not, I'm not gonna weigh in this. I'm gonna let you 100% pick what you think is the number one. And I mean, I as a kid, I would have picked these all day. If you guys wanna see my childhood glasses, these were actually my glasses for reading when I was a kid because I didn't need them and my doctor just wanted to check for my insurance. <laughs> like, I would have much rather had some of these bad boys. Yeah. I mean, they're kids' glasses, but I mean, I can still see through them. They're a little small. Yeah, I don't really see as much around here. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we're going to the Goo Lagoon True Blue. So... So this is like the other one, almost. Yeah, you have some pixel art on the side there. <laughs> and then you've got the same sponge padding, but I like the inside of that right there. Ooh. You have the, uh, you know, it doesn't say, hey, I'm a SpongeBob guy right up here in the front. But when you get home and you know who you are on the inside, boom. You got the SpongeBob on the inside there with the black out, like the yellow outlining on the black finish is gunmetal black. I mean, that's a pretty cool color. I'm like, I'm starting to want glasses. This is for the coloring of them and stuff. All right, now I feel like the most spongy, traditional spongy ones would probably be the yellow. Oh, but look, on the outside, it's black. I like that. The black on the inside and then like, the see, yellow. That's fine, yeah. Yellow on the inside there. You got the sponge pad there and the same pixel design here. It's really for these ones, a choice of whether you want to do the blue or the black. But I think overall, I don't know. This is more of a grayish black, so it would blend with most colors. And then you have the blue. Which is basically these now. Yeah, these ones, but blue. So it's the same design, but blue now on the inside here. The anchor and looking all blue looks sick compared to the dark burgundy red. Yeah, yeah, the anchor is more notable too. All right, so you've seen all six pairs. As a guy who wears glasses, if you had to pick one pair to wear every day, one pair for events and seasonal occasions, what are you picking? Okay, well these two are definitely out. Ooh, they have, damn. They have nothing going for them for me. So now we're to the big four. I can cancel, I'll cancel this one out too. Okay, 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 wow. I was not seeing that kind of movement happening. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, now we're on the big three. I think for like everyday wear, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the one with the anchors. Oh, so you went with the traditional black, kind of similar. Those are similar to the glasses you have on right now. With this little blue inner line. Okay, and, and for special bench, occasions, I'm gonna go with these yellow ones. Oh, I would have picked those two for my special pair because it's the most spongy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna have SpongeBob glasses, you might as well go all the way. But if you're trying to wear them every day, yellow doesn't work. So I understand. I think those are good choices. And you know what? I would agree with those choices. I think I would do actually those exact same choices. All right, so we picked our favorite glasses. You guys let us know what your favorite glasses are here. I mean, is it the red ones? Is it the black ones? Is it the yellow ones? Are the same choices me and Mitchell chose? But let us know down below. And Mitchell, I didn't get to tell you, but your grand prize is you get to take home this red pair of glasses. Oh, uh, you can take home these ones. You don't want them? Yeah, yeah I, I do want them, but you can get your prescriptions changed out. You wear these. I think they're a little too small. Well, maybe on a day where you don't need to see as much. <laughs> <laughs> but here we have them, the SpongeBob glasses. All right, so ranking that as a product out of 10, though, I got to give it an 8. 
An eight? I mean, they're pretty new. I was thinking lower for myself. Yeah, I was thinking like six and a half, seven. <laughs> six and a half, seven. Okay, how about seven? I mean, they're really new, but the uniqueness of them makes me not want to give them too low. Like, we don't have any other SpongeBob glasses glass. We have sunglasses, but like prescription lenses. These are our first. What would make them a 10, like if any, is to actually physically have the jellyfishing glasses, like with prescription lenses. That'd be sick. Oh, with the little like fake plastic tape on there. Like that would make it a 10 out of 10. But yeah. Oh, man. Man, I would I would stare into the sun for an hour to get those but if you wear glasses better yet let us know what you think about them next item let's check it out okay so next up out of here we have the vintage Spongebob plushie although I will say that it's not the cleanest one I've ever seen very nice yeah I mean doesn't really get much older than that really I know it's classic and you'll see also green label right there on that guy I I got the Namco on those this is from 2002 literally like I said doesn't get much older Older than that. With the little leather booties. Yes, and also back in the days, and they really cared. So, I mean, <laughs> I they don't know. I mean, yeah, there's brands like U2's, you know, Kid Robot, but you gotta pay an arm, a leg, maybe a, a, a kidney, you know, to get them. You know, this guy came out back in the day, it was 15 bucks probably. And look, you have bendable leg. You can have a oh. knee out, you can have one leg doing this. <laughs> you could blow a knee out. <laughs> you can have anything you want, really. And then the hands also bend as well, too. So, when you're you're putting him in your collection you can kind of make him sitting on something by bending the knees out a little bit putting him on the shelf this guy right here I mean just for the nostalgia of it it's not as nostalgic for me as like maybe the classic Spongebob body pillow yeah that big one <laughs> but I did have a lot of these growing up so I'm gonna give it for the nostalgia purposes I'm gonna go to eight and a half that's pretty fair yeah okay eight and a half no debates on that one no because it's like probably one of the first few plushes of it is it not yeah exactly it's not super rare but it is very very iconic a lot of people had either a smaller or bigger variation of this. This is right in the middle. There was bigger variants of the same bendable legs. Sounds like a squish metal problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 8.5 out of 10 I think is a solid number. And it even has a little hook right here so you can hang them up on your shelf or whatever you want to do with them. This collection couldn't get ooh. Oh, oh, ooh. <laughs> this collection couldn't get <laughs> any more classic. Like that's a beautiful sight, dude. You think classic's in that book? Oh, classic, you're right. Classic, classic. is a good word to look up. Arnold's grandpa is a human classic. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Clarinets, clean, climb, no classic. But we do have century. A century ago, most women did not wear jeans. Did most people wear jeans? I mean, I think jeans could have been around, but most women didn't wear jeans 100 years ago. I guess you could say that about a lot of things, though. Did you know 100 years ago, people didn't really dry? <laughs> <laughs> so next up we got here, Ooh. we have the SpongeBob, perfect for the Nickmas tree this year. I thought that was a good to grow or something, like one of those old ones, you know? I mean, maybe there could have been some kind of juicage in here. <laughs> Juicage. <laughs> <laughs> we have the SpongeBob Christmas ornament. It hooks onto a tree branch or any type of... <laughs> yeah, as you would assume. <laughs> any type of item for Christmas. I don't know. It does seem like something probably was in it because it does open. I'm thinking a drink could have been in this. I know like there was a point in time Coke used to sell like those little ornament shaped like Coke bottles. Oh yeah, they still sell them but it's at Disneyland now. What a rip off. <laughs> yeah, they sell them at the Star Wars place. They're like bombs or something. Tidy. I don't know. I feel like it's... What was in this? Maybe Ryan can get us some details on what what could have been in this? I don't feel like candy would be in a bottle. Like, okay, this is from 2014, Mitchell. You can't smell it. He's over here smelling the lid. You know, guys, it does smell like something. Cut the shot. He's smelling the lid. Oh, it does kind of still smell like something. Oh, you know what? The, smell the inside. That smells like soap. Oh, yeah. You see that scent of like, oh, I can't. This isn't good to drink. It's interesting that they don't market what it is, though. But it's maybe 100% it came in like a, like a bag soap. Set, like maybe it came in a box. Ooh. You know what I mean? But I noticed there's no calories, no anything. It's just like a scent. Without a doubt, that's bubble bath. Without a doubt. So bubble bath container. No bubble bath in it still from 2014. I'm going to give it just for the uniqueness of it. And we'd always need new Nick Mystery ornaments. I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Yeah, that's actually not a bad one. because It's like another bath thing too. So it's like kind of have a, a two in one. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? This is an occasion, it's very rare that this happens, where they actually got the orifices on Spongebob's body incorrect. If you look at the orifices on Spongebob, there's always one up here, two, one two. up here, two over here, two down here, and two down here. It's on this hole. one, he's got two up here, or he's only got one right there, two up here, the only side that has two. He's got one down there, and one down there. Nickelodeon and the licensing team does an incredible job. I'm talking overseas, Mexico, nobody gets this wrong. I will 
will only say that maybe they got it wrong due to just the quality of the molding, but it looks like it's just missing. Very rare. In a very rare circumstance where the holes on SpongeBob are incorrect. Next up here, we have some green and white label SpongeBob necklace. I thought it was like sprinkles or something. What do you call multiple necklaces? Necklace? Necklace? Necklaces. Necklaces. That sounds weird. <laughs> it does. Sounds like you have a neck. Necklaces. Check out my necklace. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the Squidward one. Or whoa, the Patrick Squidward. one. Squidward. Dang, he changed real, real happy. And then we have the SpongeBob necklace. That is creepy. I don't like that. Oh, his eyelids are white. <laughs> <laughs> it's because his, his <laughs> eyelids are white. They didn't change the coloring. They just kept the image the same. Okay, that is weird. Uh, I'm going to go with the Patrick one overall because that <laughs> one's yeah, very creepy. And this is by the brand Her. And these are from 2004 and $8, dude. Those are Yikes. expensive. Some things in the world have gotten more expensive because of, you know, inflation. But then some things have gotten less expensive due to our technology being easier to make things. Especially like things like TVs, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like this necklace nowadays would probably be like five below, you know, five dollars all day. But this back then, it was like a necklace, like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, you know, eight dollars, twelve dollars Canada, but I mean, you, everything's expensive in Canada. <laughs> so you got two of them right here. I don't know what the rating on them. That one, I'm gonna give a five out of 10, just because of the idea that they did that. And they were like, let's not change that. I was just, maybe they didn't notice it. It's and just, they just- Let me sun bleach his eyelids. Like yeah. maybe they didn't notice it and they just shipped it out, you know, but I don't really understand how that could have happened unless they just didn't care. So I'm gonna give that one a five and I'm gonna give the Patrick one a, a seven. So I was moving in the middle to six. For both? Yeah, six for necklaces. Whatever the word is. But you know this is a better build. Like this necklace will probably last you longer than a necklace nowadays. Yeah, because some of them are just so thin. They just easily snap. Yeah, this feels pretty sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yeah, seven out of seven out of ten. If we're maybe even being a little high on that one, seven out of ten. But very cool and green and white label products new to the collection. <laughs> All right, the last products here. Ooh. We got Mr. Squidward Tentacles in a green label product right here, coming straight out of the lid. My man got a fitted cap. We got Whoa. the Squidward Zand right here. Or no, Swan. 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 Swand? Swand. Squand. Squand. I guess it's squand. Squand. So this is sand that you could use to build something underwater. So this sand exclusively works underwater. You take it out of the water, it falls apart like normal sand. You put it in water, you could build a mausoleum. You <laughs> can build anything. Pour squand in water to make amazing squandscapes. I love the Krusty Krab hat. Yeah, it's like a little pumper. Pumper? <laughs> yeah, it says, ask your parents to help you select a clear container, such as a small bowl or glass, maybe. Fill half the, <laughs> what did they put maybe? Fill half the container with water, unscrew the squand bottle, and hold the bottle at an angle to gently let it out. You just like, strive how to pour something. Release the eyedropper until the tube, oh, so this must be the eyedropper. Oh, okay. Until the tube is three-fourths full, place your finger over the tub until it's a long process. You are ready to release all the squand into the water. Squeeze and tap and release the squand into the water and create coral reefs or simply pour the squand out of the bottle while moving upward with SpongeBob's house. Well, I don't see SpongeBob's house, but... Oh, no. Or, here it is. Or... Simply pour the squand out of the bottle while moving upward to create SpongeBob's house. So if you just go like this, SpongeBob's house will just appear. Whoa. <laughs> but dude, this is like a brilliant, like it's beautiful, like the way it looks. I love that he's doing like the Krusty Krab order too. <laughs> yeah, he's got his little order book right there, but the clearness and then getting the Squidward colored squand inside of there looks really nice. Like I just love the aesthetic of how this looks. It kind of reminds me of those glass bottles they had back in the day with multiple layers of coloring. Yeah, with sand and stuff. Yeah, so like the color on that is cool. Cool, but it doesn't finish there. We also got Patrick with his own Jellyfish Fan Club Jellyfish Convention hat on, and the pink sand squan looks beautiful. And I don't Dang. know if the the bottles almost look like they're tinted, right? I, yeah, I can't. That was like a darker, like clear. I don't know. No, yeah. they're just clear. But it's the, it's the squan inside of them. <laughs> squan. The squan inside of them makes it so compact. It looks like the glass itself is stained. So we got squan squatrick. Squan squidward and squan squatrick. And this one has the same description. 
here, so. So you built SpongeBob's house yet again. <laughs> I just peaked this time. Squan can be magically shaped into any form underwater, which is perfect for SpongeBob. And we actually have this one in the collection right now, but now we officially have the entire set. So we have the SpongeBob Squan with Gary on top. We did not have Patrick or Squidward, but we now have a complete set, including another SpongeBob Ooh. here. So that's the thing you do, you upgrade. Yeah, we upgraded from one slightly, I mean, it's not used, it's brand new still, but I guess the plastic now wrap came up. Plastic wrap still to the official full country gang, wrapped and sealed. Squapped. <laughs> yeah, squapped and sealed. Scapped and squealed. Absolutely brilliant. And that actually completes our box. So we have to rate these last guys here. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. And by himself, seven. Eight. But that labeling, dude, the green label, and then the just the product's unique design stands out among so many other SpongeBob figures, you know? Yeah. Gonna give that a 10 out of 10. So, an amazing haul we had here today. Probably one of the greatest hauls we've had as far as vintage SpongeBob merchandise goes. I'm gonna scan it, but we're leaving those right there. I'm not moving those any more than we have to. We're gonna scan what's on the table right now. You know the drill. Squan it! So for the green label shelf, everything is now on here. So we have all three of the squans. And I also moved some stuff up here on top of what you guys can already see is the bikini bottom play set there. And I also added the bubble bath right here in their own little section. These actually are like bath toys you could buy separately, but I kind of feel like, you know, they got left out with having a little topper. So I decided to give them their own little hats to fit in with the, the jelly berry one right here. And then I added the splash and roll game down here. Typically we would add board games to the board game section in the back of the room but because it's so new in the collection I just want to be able to see it and it is sealed green label still so I wanted to add it here for the time being and I think it fits in really well there with the blue phone case that we have on the right over there it kind of blends it in with the bag clip too all right guys so that is actually it for this one I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did make sure you guys smack that like button subscribe if you're new here and also do not forget go check us out on patreon where you'll get an extended version of this video and also every other video that we upload and a bunch of other additional perks too so go check it out and don't forget we're on whatnot two nights a week on wednesdays and fridays and you get 15 dollars off your first purchase over there which could likely buy you a lot of the stuff we got in this video or get a deep discount on it and they have so much more so go take a look at it and make sure you guys use that free 15 dollars considering it is free money and i'll see you guys over here in this video that i know you're gonna love and as always rep pack i will see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios.